If you've been here before, you know how much I love my denims. I wear them quite often, but it took me a while before I was able to find that perfect pair that works for me. And in today's video, I want to share with you how to find yours. A little bit of history, denim originated in 1860 when Levi Strauss created this stiff canvas work pants. The name denim dates back to 17th century in Nimes, France. It wasn't until 1950 that denim as we know it today came to be worn as a fashion statement. Before then, it was solely used for utility and work purposes. There are some rules as which style will flatter, which body type, which at the end of the day, the only rules you should be following are the ones that you set for yourself and even those can be broken. The first thing to figure out, and this does not only apply to denim jeans, but also to any clothing item, is which feature of your body you're trying to highlight and which one you're trying to minimize or conceal. Next is how much you prioritize comfort and whether you care at all of looking physically proportional. In this video, I'm going to tell you which style that's what and let you decide which one works for you. Starting with the rise, which refers to the top part of your denim jeans, there are three types of rises, a high rise, a mid rise, and a low rise. Depending on the length of your torso, a high rise will typically hit you at your belly button or right above it. A mid rise will typically hit you at your belly button or right below it. And a low rise will hit you right below your belly button, so barely covering your buttocks. If you're going for the hourglass look or just like to accentuate your waist, then a mid to high rise will be your best option. Mid to high rise are also favored by those that, like me, have a longer torso because it makes us look more proportionally, physically speaking. Now, if you have a short torso or you just don't care at all about looking physically proportional and you just want to accentuate your booty, then a low rise will be your best option. If you don't know whether you have a short, mid or long torso and you're interested and you want to measure yourself at home, I'll leave some articles down below so that way you can check it out. Now that you have chosen your favorite rise, it is time to choose the cut which refers to the shape of the leg, whether it's skinny, roomy, or flare. A straight leg cut is considered to be more classic, timeless, and versatile. I have all three of them in my wardrobe and I do wear them all, but I do prefer one more than the others. Underneath those three categories, there are some subcategories. I'll just talk about briefly about the ones that are more commonly known or the ones that I'm familiar with. The skinny one are the ones that are fitted all the way from your waistline through your feet. The tapered one can be loose around the hips area, but then they taper around the leg. The straight leg, as the name says, goes straight from the top to the bottom. So they might be a little fitted on the hips area depending on your body type, but then they go straight down. The wide leg, if they are fitted on you, they only fit it on the very top area of your body. So the hips and then they just go wide around the legs. And the flare ones are usually very fitted, just like the skinny all, and then they flare out right below your knees. If you are unsure of what rise and cut suits your style the best, I highly suggest going into a store and trying them on and do a couple of different ones to see and take notes of the measurements. For example, I know that my preferred rise is between 11 and 13. I prefer 12, but I don't like going lower than 11 just because I think that's what suits my style and what looks better on my body for what I'm going for. And that way when you go online, if you are an online shopper like I am, then you know exactly what you're looking for when you're comparing measurements. Next is the length or as more formally known as the inseam, which is the distance between the crotch and your feet. And this one, I see it as the least important one because if you can find a pair of denny jeans that fit you the way you want it to fit you everywhere else, but they're too long, that's something that is fixable. You can either take it to a tailor, some people do it themselves. Though if it is too short and you're not looking for a cropped pair of denny jeans, then that's not gonna work for you. But I'm talking about if you buy a pair of denny jeans and they come too long, some brands now have them that they come extremely long so that way you can hem them or have them at the inseam that you prefer. I know Emoji and Willie, for example, offer a 30 or over 30 inch inseam for the jeans and then you have to hem them if you want to hem and they offer to do them for you uh, free charges. I myself, I'm in the petite side and so I had to do that for a lot of my denim jeans, though lately I have been just coughing them and I've been liking that. So that works for me. So if that's something that works for you, you can consider that. The structure of your denim is something that I don't hear a lot of people talk about, but I think it's very important. Depending on the look that you're going for, if you want a relaxed look and you want your denim to be really fitted, so a skinny pair, it makes sense that you want some stretch on them so you can get them through your hips. <laughs> but if you don't care for your denim jeans to fit tight or fit it all the way through your body, and you want to go for a more formal look, then it makes more sense to go for a 99% or even 100% cotton 
and then maybe get a size up so that way you get that extra comfort without having to get any inner stain on your denim jeans. Speaking of formal, if you are going for a formal or more classic look in a timeless too, then you might want to stay away from holes or at least the big holes that you get on your denim jeans. Nothing wrong with that, I have nothing against that, but I do prefer not to have any major distressing on my denims. I do agree that it's less classic and versatile. I feel like having a pair of denim that has no hole or that has very little stressing, it's easy for me to pair with any tops that I have in my wardrobe and build up a more classic look and even bring them to work on Friday, which is when we're allowed to bring or to wear denim jeans to work. And so Having that, if you do like having holes in your denims, then having also the option of another pair that does not have hole, it just makes your wardrobe more versatile and timeless. Some people that prioritize comfort do like their denims to have at least one or two percent or less stain in it, so that way they have some wiggle room or stretch to them. I personally prefer them to not have any stretch, but I do also prioritize comfort. I need my clothes that I'm wearing to be comfortable i want to be able to move in them and then allow me to do whatever it is that i'm doing when i'm wearing my clothes and so the way i go about that or around it is that i either size up or make sure that just have a little wiggle room for my skin to breathe and for me being able to move around otherwise if you absolutely need to have that stretch into your denim jeans i don't see anything wrong with having a one or even two percent but if you do go higher than that of elastane in it it does affect the quality of your denim and how long they last and how well they wash and all that i do have a couple of skinny jeans in my wardrobe that do have a one and two percent and so for me that's stretchy enough that i can still move and do whatever it is i need to do with a pair of denims that are very fitted to my body but at the same time i still have that structure that i look and that i like in my denim jeans the color or wash of the denim also affects the look of them so again if you're looking for a more formal look than going darker it's gonna give you that but if you're looking for a more relaxed casual look then going lighter will do that i don't think it's a general rule but it's well known that lighter denims are usually more worn or favored during the warmer months and then darker denims are more favored during the colder months and that's how i have it i also have a mid blue range or a meat wash or color range of denims in my wardrobe that i wear all year round during the colder months i don't really gravitate towards lighted denim and so I do tend to put them away and then I pull them back out once it starts warming up. Also it say that the darker wash that you go the more slimmer effect that you get and so there's also that. Again depending on the look that you're going for if you're trying to go for a more formal or classic look then a straight leg or even wide leg can do that for you. In the other hand, if you don't care for those things and you don't plan to wear your denim jeans to a more formal event, then a skinny jean can be very casual and more relaxed, even though they're not physically relaxed because they are fitted all the way through your body. But from the outside perspective, it is more relaxed in terms of style. Last but not least, and I dare say it's the most important one of them all, and it's the fit of your denim jeans. When it comes to the shaping of your body and what you need your denim jeans to do for you, the rear back pocket plays a major role into that. If you're looking for the appearance of a large shirt behind, then small pockets will do that for you. But in the opposite, if you're looking for a smaller looking behind, then a bigger pockets will do that for you. If the back pockets are placed low, it's gonna give an effect of a droopy behind. But in the contrary, if the pockets are placed a little higher, then it's gonna give a lift effect because that's where your vision or your eyes are gonna go. Some said never buy a pair of denim jeans that has no pockets on the back because it makes them look cheaply made and unflattering. I tend to agree depending on the cut of the denim. I have a white pair of, or a white leg pair of denim jeans that has no pockets on the back and I find them super flattering, at least on me, they are, and they do not look cheaply made, and the price reflect that, <laughs> but just keep that in mind, and typically, yes, I wouldn't go for a pair of straight leg or skinny jeans that has no pockets. In conclusion, I think that you should wear whatever the heck you wanna wear, regardless of what's in style, and or what other people are telling you, and or showing you what you should wear. So you all have different needs and wants and likes and so nobody has the right to tell you what you need or should wear and so that is my um, TED talk I guess